Hi, I'm Chris Cooper. Welcome to The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Thanks for joining us. Strawberry Plains Audubon Center is one of Mississippi's finest natural and historic treasures with 3,000 acres of hardwood forests, wetlands, and native grasslands. They also provide inspiration and education to people who want to take conservation action at home with native plant landscaping. And that's what we're talking about today, how we can use native plants to transform our landscapes into beautiful, inviting sanctuaries for birds, butterflies, and other forms of wildlife. We're also going to give you a great idea for getting your kids involved in gardening. All that and more is coming up next on The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South, so stay with us. This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by Goodwin's Landscape and Garden Center in Germantown since 1943 and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to The Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today from Strawberry Plains Audubon Center is Kristen Lemerson and Mitch Robinson. Hello. And we also have Tim Roberts here today. Tim is an extension agent right here in Shelby County. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Good to be Thank here. Thank you. All right, we're good. Now, Ms. Kristen, yes, what sir. is Strawberry Plains Audubon Center and what do you do there? And Mitch, what do you do there as well? So we're going to start with you, Ms. Christian. All right. Well, my title is interpretive, okay. uh, interpretive garden specialist. Okay. Uh, basically, that means that I didn't go to school for this. I kind of learned, <laughs> learned on the fly. Okay. But what I do there, uh, in a nutshell, is I uh, grow and promote the use of native plants through outreach programs, education, and, and actually hands in the dirt. Okay. Mitch? So I'm the conservation education manager, uh, which is variety of things, but I coordinate a lot of our programming and facilitate different things through Kristen uh, and as well as Chad Pope, who's our uh, land manager. Okay. But um, a better idea of what Strawberry Plains is, we're part of the National Audubon Society. We're over 3,000 acres right. of land that used to be in intensive cotton and agricultural cultivation. Uh -huh. And so we've kind of naturally gone back to what the landscape should be. Uh, we provide educational programming. We're also a demonstration site for cool. a variety of different habitats and things that people can do on their home. Um, we have the Cold Water Prescribed Burn Association, which was the first uh, landowner run prescribed burn association in the southeast. And then Kristen's native plant nursery is maybe the only place around uh, the Memphis area where you can actually get native plants for uh, attracting wildlife. How about that, Kristen? Mm. All right, well, since you uh, have those native plants, why native plants anyway? Mm -hmm. Well, I, it's, you know, we've always heard that they're, they're good for wildlife mm -hmm. or they're more situated for water or the, the soil that we have. But the, the most important thing is that it's our support system for wildlife from the ground up. So, you know, the, the native plants have evolved with the wildlife and the insects yeah. and that insect connection. And so they're taking the, um, the nutrients from the earth and the sun and passing them on to the insect Mm -hmm. realm of the food chain and then everybody eats that and from Audubon's standpoint if we have birds 96% um, of the birds rely on insects uh, mm -hmm. for their diet here in the United States especially right now when they're breeding and feeding their young okay. and those native plants is, is the base of that support system so much more than uh, exotics most of the time okay. uh, especially caterpillars and things like that a lot of nutrients in that caterpillar so that the, the, it's the it's the food chain base of the food chain okay so always an interesting conversation about natives versus non-natives. Mm -hmm. So can we use non-native plants in our landscape? How do you feel about that? Yeah, I, by all means. Okay. You know, especially if if you know you have your favorite hand-me-down or heirloom. You know, I just think you you want to watch it. You know, uh, what's going to give you more bang for your buck? You know, yeah. make sure you have some of the uh, the the host plants for the butterflies and the oak trees. And and I do, most importantly, I think you just make sure that that non-native isn't going to take over the world. You know, just make sure, sure it's not invasive and that yeah the birds aren't eating it right. and pooping it out all over where they're flying right so um <laughs> so yeah by all means it's not an either or it's what okay. can support that bigger system 
most most efficiently. Okay, we just want to make sure it doesn't take over the world. I like that. <laughs> Starting locally and going globally. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, let's talk about the top five native plants that attract hummingbirds. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, my favorite. There's uh, quite a few native uh, hummingbird pollinated plants, but I have one right here. Yeah, yeah, um, okay. This is a woodland plant called uh, Spigelia marylandica, or um, Indian pink. And it's a hummingbird pollinated woodland plant. Often it will bloom twice, especially after the first bloom if you cut it back and then it will uh, come back and hummingbirds use it. Hummingbird pollinated plant for woodlands. A lot of people think that you have shade, you can't have plants that attract mm. hummingbirds or butterflies and that's simply not true. Okay. Another great plant, that's my favorite, is bee balm, but yeah, Monarda didima, mm -hmm. the, the red one, Oswego tea. Um, uh, native honeysuckle, the coral mm -hmm. honeysuckle, Lanisera sempervirens okay. is blooming now. Uh, that just finished blooming, uh, red buckeye, Aeschylus pavia. Beautiful. Really mm -hmm. important uh, shrubby uh, tree to have here when the hummingbirds are first working their way because it's blooming and heralds their arrival. A lot okay. of bang for their buck, <laughs> too, in there. And uh, I think that was, I think, cardinal flower, Lobelia yeah. cardinalis, mm -hmm. more of a wetland edge, wetland plant, uh, blooms in midsummer and hummingbirds and butterflies all over it. So, th so there's other top ones for me, but um, there's, there's, a, there's a few more, but those are pretty easy to come by in nurseries okay. um, and certainly our nursery carries them. Listen to the passion. <laughs> God, it like it flows. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it flows. <laughs> yeah. So you do have a plant sale coming up. Uh, do you want to tell us about the plant sale? And Mitch, you jump in there if you want to tell us something too about the plant sale as well. Sure, it's the May 16th and okay. 17th, which is a Friday and Saturday, nine through okay. four on those days. Um, we're actually working with that nursery. We have two big plant sales now, one in the spring, one in the fall. We're working on that nursery to get it up to snuff uh, so that it's open to the public all season long. Okay. Um, right now we have issues with armadillo holes and people breaking their ankles as they're going along. So we want to get wow. that, that, that issue figured out and, and those plants will be available. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mitch, would you like to add anything to that? Um, coming out and just seeing the grounds at Strawberry Plains, you know, we have an antebellum house on site that doesn't have the typical landscaping that you would assume uh, with an, an old house like that. And so to see how you can do uh, landscaping with natives that's both beautiful but still uh, somewhat kept. You know, we kind of had this transition areas between the wildlands and then the areas closer to uh, what we call our main campus that are a little more manicured. And so it's not um, the perfect demonstration, but uh, it's, it's very unique and it, uh, you know, kind of adds to what makes Strawberry Plains a little bit, a little bit exceptional. Okay. And, and why the name Strawberry Plains? I always wondered that. Well, it's the first uh, family that actually moved to the property back in the 1830s after wow. the Chickasaw Indians uh, moved to Oklahoma from the Treaty of Pontotoc. Uh, the Davis family came from the East Coast, and um, the story is that uh, when Miss Davis came upon the property, there were wild strawberries all throughout the woodlands. <laughs> and so before they took all that timber down and put it into cotton, they decided that would be the name of the property. Anything you want to add to that? That was pretty good. That was good. Yeah. I, I, it's a keeper. <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Now let's, let's mention the date, you know, for that plant sale again. Sure. What May are the 16th and 17th. That's a Friday and Saturday. Okay. You have a website or something? That they could, uh, yeah, it's strawberryplains.audubon.org. Uh, we also have a Facebook page, so search Strawberry Plains on Facebook. Um, all of our events are posted on our website, uh, all of our programs. We'll have summer programs for kids this year, uh, most Fridays of the summer. We're going to do a young naturalist program, so yeah. it should be fun. Okay. Now, and you do most of those programs? Yeah, I do. And uh, we even bring in experts. We have a, a, a naturalist program going on right now that uh, is for 10 weeks. It's every Friday. And we bring in experts from the Extension Service, oh. professors from University of Mississippi, from Mississippi State. Uh, we even have just um, local experts that have specialties in spiders or uh, we even had someone come out from the National Weather Service, so it's it's a real cool program for people that may not have a science background wow. to get an in-depth understanding of kind of how the natural systems work, um, and you get to do it at a place like Strawberry Plains. So, well, it sounds like you have a real good time out there. Yeah, it's we not do. too bad. We're yeah. pretty blessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not too bad. Can't you tell it to him? Uh, That's right. <laughs> and we love to laugh. I mean, it's important to laugh and That's enjoy exactly what you right. do. Mm -hmm. Well, good. Thanks, Kristen. Thank Thanks, you. Mitch. Thank you. Thank you so that. much, Kristen. There are a number of gardening events going on in the next couple of weeks. Here are just a few that might interest you. All right, Tim, let's talk mm -hmm. plant camp. What do you want us to know? 
We have plant camp coming up. Okay. It's going to be June the 9th through the 13th. Okay. It is for 8 to 12 year olds. Okay. Okay. And uh, it will be from 9 a.m. until noon every day, uh, Monday through Friday. And plant camp is just where the students can uh, come out to uh, learn okay. how to plant and learn about plants because plant is not only a verb, it's also a noun. So we want to uh, make sure that uh, everybody knows that. Uh, it is $35 uh, per student uh, for uh, the whole week and that includes everything they'll bring home as well as a snack every day. We try to have our snack uh, that uh, revolves around the theme for that day. Uh, our theme for this year is Dirt Made My Lunch. I like that. <laughs> so like uh, that. we're, we're going to talk a lot about uh, the different parts of that because each day will have its own theme. Soil is the first day and we have a special guest coming that day. Uh, we have Sammy the Soil that's going to be with <laughs> us that day. So the uh, uh, youth will be able to meet Sammy the Soil and we'll talk a lot about soil and have activities that go along with soil. and. Uh, one day is going to be uh, seeds, so we're going to get to harvest the agri-circle that day. Mm -hmm. So the students will uh, be able to um, take home some of the produce that we've grown there at Agri-Center uh, on the agri-circle. Okay. Uh, as well as we've got a special guest that day. We have the bee whisperer uh, okay. coming in that's uh -huh. going to talk about bees. We're going to get to see a beehive, so uh, they'll... Uh, uh, talk a little about bees as well and uh, uh, the bee whisperer will be with us and he's going to take us up and show us a hive and talk to us about bees okay. and uh, so uh, we'll go on with fruits uh, one day as well as uh, plants uh, we'll get to plant the agri circle so not only will they uh, take back stuff home but they'll plant something that's going to be growing all throughout the summer mm. into the fall and they'll be able to bring their families back and show them what they uh, were able to plant for that day. So, Do you have any examples of what they may? <clears throat> I do. Uh, I have some really great uh, volunteers. Okay. Uh, the uh, Master Gardeners do a fantastic yeah. job and I have one that prepackages all of what we're going to make. We make something in wood every year and of course we have our trusty hammers and yes they get to use hammers mm -hmm. and they get to build things like the nice uh, box and not only do they uh, get to build it but we'll decorate it as well as and I'm going to use uh, some of Kristen's uh, plants. <laughs> sometimes we plant seeds in it, sometimes uh, we have other things to plant because not everything we plant is a seed and we want to make sure that uh, student, students know that uh, other things can uh, uh, be planted not necessarily just from seeds. So. Okay and that's one of the activities that you guys will be doing during that week. That's one of the activities. We have all kinds of activities planned. We start planning early yeah. and uh, we want to make it interesting for uh, all the youth uh, as well as a time to learn about plants and okay. how to plant. Lots and lots of different things that go along with uh, plants. Good. What's nope. the age limit on that again? Yeah. I, <laughs> I want to meet Mr. Soil. Oh, oh, oh okay. she wants yeah. to see yeah. yeah. the yeah. the soil. Yeah. The box it, from it's <laughs> eight to twelve year olds, but we do allow volunteers <laughs> to come and, and join us. Oh. And, yeah, uh, you just missed it. I know. <laughs> a couple yeah. of years. Lots of our volunteers uh, say they think they learn as much yeah. as the, the youth do and have as much fun yeah. just watching them sometimes and uh, we have lots of uh, people that uh, come out and help and uh, we, we really have a great week. Okay now let me ask you this can you tell us what the kids will be planting? What they will be planting? Yeah at the agri uh, circle. On the agri circle yes. uh, we will be planting cotton, okay. corn, soybeans and sunflowers. Cool. Those are some of the things that we grow there at Agri Center every year. Of course the sunflowers uh, we do not harvest the sunflowers that are at Agri Center. We do those for the wildlife. Okay. But it's something that Agri Center is known for, so we want to plant things that we do there at Agri Center. 
Okay. So the kids actually get a chance to get their hands dirty. Oh, yes. This is what Plant Camp is pretty much all about. That's exactly right. Uh, They will uh, be getting into the soil and uh, learning how how to harvest and uh, what parts to harvest and eat to take home and as well as how to plant. And uh, we'll talk about depth of seed and how to cover it and make sure it's watered and all of that. Uh, now, what about Friday's activity? Do you have anything that you're going to be doing on Friday oh, as the week winds up? Friday, and, and of course, uh, Dirt Made My Lunch <laughs> is a song. Oh, it's a song. So, uh, we'll be learning the song. Uh, we'll be doing a, the song for the parents at the end of the week. Uh, all of the youth will uh, get a t-shirt okay. uh, as well. We'll take some pictures. We'll, uh, of course have our song and... Um, do, do you want to give us a rendition of the song? No, that's all right. Uh, I, I, we'll, we'll say that okay, for we'll later. Say that, okay. Okay. Yes, yes. Oh, man. Okay. Are y'all doing Jeopardy again oh, this yes. year? I always it's, like to go to Friday's uh, you know, event because it's Jeopardy. Yes, uh, because what we do is we bring back questions right. that some of the students have had or some things we've talked about. We'll split the group up and we'll have a little fun competition with the different groups and we'll have some fantastic prizes that Mm -hmm, go along mm -hmm. with that. Uh, And uh, just uh, uh, reiterate some of the things that they have learned all week. Okay. And you find out that the kids have a good time? Oh, okay. They have a good time because we have uh, youth coming back every year. Plus, we have some of our former plant camp campers that come back to be Mm -hmm. some of our youth Mm -hmm. volunteers. Uh, They like it so much that I have had one that went all through. They uh, graduated from plant camp. Now (laughs) this will be their third year to come back as uh, a youth volunteer. Okay. And lastly, applications. Where do we get the applications for plant camp? Applications can be found on the Shelby County website. That's at Shelby dot tennessee dot edu okay and uh, across the uh, orange bar it says plant camp it's drop down menu then click on it get the application and uh, just mail that in okay now is there a limit we do have a limit of 30 campers every year Uh, so be sure and get your application in quickly uh, so there is a spot for you and we do have a few spots that are still left so you spots to the left, Christian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I borrow your laptop? <laughs> Tim, thanks for that good information. It's definitely good to get the kids involved in gardening. We appreciate that. All right. All right. Here's our Q&A session, okay? And today is all viewer emails, okay? This is good. Our first question is from Pat. I have two large oak trees in my yard with no grass under either. I know the trees pull the water away from the plants, and their shade prevents many things from growing. I don't want ivy, okay? Is there any kind of grass or cover crop I can use? I need something for the back that will hold up under large dog trampling on it. I even thought of kudzu. Ah. It's a horrible <laughs> thought, but I'm desperate. Wow. So you have a comment for that? And, and I'll share mine. After yeah, you well, you know, I, I was, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Until yeah, she got to the okay. dogs, so I'm like, nah. Yeah. It's going to be uh, tough. Yeah, it is going to yeah. be tough. So um, all these plants, actually, the oak thing, all these plants are shade woodland plants. So I, I think of woodland under those oaks. You know, there's hundreds of plants uh, mm-hmm. that do shade, shrubs and uh, herbaceous layer. Uh, the dog thing kind of throws another crump, uh, crimp into it. Although these guys, these three, I think would actually had, uh, hold up to that. But even wood violets, the, the native wood violet, really tough as nails plant. It's blooming now, has those beautiful heart-shaped leaves, and yes, you can walk, trample, mow, um, they hold up. Also, it's a host could, plant. Could you name some of those? Well, the wood violets, just the ones that you a lot of people um, dig out of their yard. You know, the little purple, just oh, the regular okay, violets. Okay. Yeah, okay, regular yeah, violets, yeah. right. Regular wild violets, violets, wild violets. Wild violets. Yeah, okay. and um, yes. they're the host plant for uh, fritillary butterfly. And okay. often the fritillary butl- butterfly will stay on there uh, throughout the winter, so you don't want to get rid of it. And every part of the wood violet is edible, the flower, the, the, yeah. the thing. So um, that's a good one. And then there's a salvia, a native salvia, lyre leaf sage. The, the basal foliage almost looks like an ajuga, but mm-hmm. right now you'll have the stalk that comes up with a salvia-like flower that's this color. Okay. And so once after that blooms and you cut it back, you'll have that. So those two mixed would actually be really pretty and, and handle all the dogs too. 
Yeah, the, the dog really, you know, kind of <laughs> you know, throws a wrench into it. Yeah. I was thinking this, you know, let the dogs have their path. We're talking about large oak trees. How about mulch it? Right. Uh -huh. You, you could just mulch it. And yeah. then under those large trees, if you want to, uh, hydrangeas. You yeah, can do yeah. oak leaf hydrangeas, oak leaf hydrangeas. Uh, Annabelle hydrangeas. Yeah. Uh, if you want something that's real tough, autumn ferns yeah. will yeah. be kind of tough yes. in that area. Uh, Tim, do you have any other? I have some uh, autumn ferns under uh -huh. some of my tough. oak trees because I have large oak trees and it's just hard to get grass to grow. Right, uh, right. I've tried that, so we're trying other things like the mulch and, yeah. and planting some other uh, things that take a lot of shade okay. under that. Okay, and I'm glad Pat knew that, that you couldn't yes. grow the grass under the mm -hmm. trees. So, All right, here's our second uh, viewer question. It's from our Mergy. She writes, we tilled up an area in the yard that had never been used for garden space, and there were hundreds of grub worms in the soil. How do we get rid of them? They tried granular seven, they tried a spectroscope liquid, seven dust and diatomaceous earth, and they are still seeing live grubs. They need help. Now, I'm gonna, go ahead, Christian. I'm going to let you jump in there. Well, I know we'll come right behind you. We'll come right behind you. Um, well, so that question, there was, uh, didn't seem to be an issue with them. It was just the fact they were there. They were there, right. I wouldn't worry about it. If, it's, if they're not eating anything or they're not doing anything, they're not uh, eating your plants or doing anything negative, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, there are critters, you know, the more diverse your landscape, the more you're going to have those natural predators right. and those things that eat it. So by that question, if they're not harming anything, I, I would walk away. Just go and lie in your hammock or something. <laughs> take, a deep, hammock. Take, a, take a deep breath I like and let that. it out. Yeah. Okay, my thing is this. So that area was probably a lawn area. Mm -hmm. They, mm -hmm. They say it's never been used before. Mm -hmm. So the lawn area is going to have right. a pretty high population of grubs. That's mm -hmm. right. Now we're talking about a vegetable garden, so UT Extension oh, mm -hmm. does not recommend any insecticides for a home vegetable garden. That's correct. This is what I would do. Just turn the soil over a couple of times, mm -hmm. you expose the grubs, and you let the birds come mm -hmm. in and eat them. Mm -hmm. Good answer. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, that's what I would do. Yes. Because uh, there's nothing that you can spray in there. So, yeah, just turn them over, right. you know, let, the, let the birds come in and do their thing. Mother Nature has it together. That's right. It, right? And, and just watch your plants yeah. and kind of know, okay, if the leaves turn a certain way, they're drooping, we know it's not watered, then that's when you start being a little more concerned about things. But turning it over, that's the best thing you can do. Yes. And just let Mother Nature take over. All right, here's our next question. It's from Kevin. He writes, I bought some bales of wheat straw to use as mulch, and I noticed some of them had a black fungus growing on them. Can this be harmful to my yard or my vegetable garden? I'll pass on that one. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. It's probably not going to be anything. Um, there might have been uh, uh, some diseases there when it was wheat, uh, but once it uh, it's dry, you're not going to have any problems with it. I mean, Kevin, yeah. there's nothing to worry about here. Uh, I mean, simply what's happening is a fungus that's growing on decaying organic material. That's right. right. Uh, that's all it's doing. The wheat bale was wet, so it's just growing there. At the end of the day, it's just called nutrient recycling. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much what it is, and, and fungus thrive in that environment of nutrient recycling, so mm -hmm. that's what it is. Go ahead and use the weed straw. It'll dry right. up like Tim said. You'll be just fine. That's right. Just fine. And, and speaking of mulch, do you guys use mulch much out in Strawberry Plains? Um, when I do, I really love pine straw. Pine uh, straw. Pine straw, I just because it's so easy and it, it decays quickly, but we try to have a lot of plant cover, and so that's, you know, what we just let everything come in and grow close together and then we don't have to worry about it so much. Okay. Well, let's get to this last question quickly. It's from Cindy up in uh, Millington. Okay. I have hostas in my yard and they are all full sun. By July the 4th, the leaves are curled, brown, <laughs> and burnt. Is there anything I can do to prevent this? Well, put them in shade. Put them in shade. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And Cindy, put them in shade. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're shade-loving plants. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can deal with mm -hmm. some morning sun, but by the time we get to the end of the day, they don't want that, mm -hmm. you know, extreme heat, uh, you know, from the sun. So shade loving plants. And Chris, isn't it amazing when you look at the evolution of plants and stuff, all the plants that like shade are, are really, really relish shade and do well in shade. They have those big leaves mm -hmm. to capture mm -hmm. the little sun that's there. You mm -hmm. have the spring ephemerals that are taking advantage of mm -hmm. that open canopy and stuff. And sometimes by just looking at the structure of the plant, you can kind of dictate, kind of dictates uh -huh. what, where it's going to go. Uh, I agree. Agreed. Big leaves, beautiful mm -hmm. leaves, mm -hmm. and of course, hosses are known for their leaves. But yeah, get them, 
Get them in shape. Yeah, because the sun will burn them up. Trust me, I know. <laughs> it, 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 it's happened to me. I know this by experience. Tim, do you have something to add to that? Uh, okay. Mitch? You, you can okay. put them, uh, if you dig them up, put them in a pot, put them under the canopy of your um, yeah, big oak tree. Yeah. Or, <laughs> yes, your big yeah. oak tree, something like that, yes. Okay. Because they're not going to do well. All right. All right, thank you guys for that. Remember, we love to hear from you. Send us a letter or an email with your gardening questions. Send your email to familyplot at wknl.org. The mailing address is Family Plot, 7151 Cherry Farms Road, Cordova, Tennessee, 38016. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Cooper. Be sure to join us next time for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Be safe. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South, is provided by Goodwin's Landscape and Garden Center, in Germantown since 1943, and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants, plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund and by viewers like you. Thank you.